All of this PAX East 2016 coverage is brought to you by CyberPower, who make the fanbook that we recently overclocked past 4 gigahertz. I actually think VR is one of the most interesting things happening. Right. And in fact, I would describe myself as one of the pinnacle VR enthusiasts, but I also appear to be one of the pinnacle VR skeptics. Sure. I go back, you know, even, even in the earliest days, like on the Apple II, um, you know, they, they, people made some simple VR goggles that, you know, had a tiny view screen, right. uh, had terrible lag, and even data gloves that you could wear, you know, even something ten, Nintendo way back, uh -huh. I think it made a data glove. And, uh, and every time one of those come out, we'd get really excited about it. And we'd, we'd convert uh, whatever game we were working on at the time, we would spend a couple of weeks making it work in VR just because we just thought it'd be so cool. And as a demo, it was cool. Right. But every time you'd play with it, you're going like, yeah, but you know, the lag is really making me sick and the peripheral vision is just not there. And so to think of actually playing a game that way, you're going, it's not going to be, an, it's not going to be a superior experience. And so every year these would come out, every few years somebody would make this run and, and we'd look at them and abandon it. Right. Well, obviously the latest round of VR has gotten an enormous amount of attention and investment and the hardware is way, way better. And so we now have VR hardware that is pretty dang good. Right. Uh, you know, not only is it really full visual area, the tracking and response time is now very, very quick. Um, and I go see, your yeah, latency's low. I see demos now that I'm going like, that is a really cool demo. But I don't see very many things I'm going like, I would buy that game and 10 more like it that I can see 10 variations on the theme that will be interesting to explore different ways in which VR is being created. Or I go to people's booths where they're demonstrating VR and I watch them do things like, uh, this one demo might be, I'm gonna pick up something out of a bowl and set it on a table or a shelf, and I watch them struggling to do that, and I'm just going like, yeah, okay, well, you know, we're just not there. Right. And, and while I go, some of these things are fun, I mean, I, I, have, I enjoy going booth to booth and going like, hey, that was, that was cool, that was fun. But I haven't seen the killer app, not one, much less 10. Right. And until there's 10 killer apps, you're not gonna sell $500 or better hardware. Right. And to get, this, to get the technical solution, you really need to be selling the, you know, the, the, the phones in cases mm -hmm. is cool and will be freely available, but doesn't have the wide wraparound of, of, of view, doesn't let you see your own hands in right. front of you. And so you really need to be buying multi-thousand dollar hardware to really solve the problem. Sure. And even with the problem solved, there's not yet the killer apps. So, uh, so I remain a huge enthusiast and a huge skeptic. But, it's, but at least for me, I'm now to the point where I am toying with trying to build something. Mm. Only just, not because I think I can solve the problem necessarily, but because somebody needs to solve this problem. And, and it's not that I don't think the other people trying to solve it are at least as smart or maybe smarter, especially in the VR area as I am, but it, it's at least interesting enough to begin to toy with. Right. So that's what we've, we've done a lot of these <coughs> demos as you, I mean, you do the show as you know how many there are. And that's the problem I've had on the, even just the editorial side, a lot of it's sort of you know, Everest, Everest or the Star Wars demo. They're cool for a few minutes. And personally, as a gamer outside of the, the gaming industry as a, a reporter, I don't necessarily see myself going home, going through the effort to set it all up and then playing the demos more than a few times. Right. Or even look like, uh, even if you skip uh, games and you just go to more virtual reality, say, experiences, movies, or other right. things, uh, there is a, a, a fairly well-known movie maker whose name is eluding me, but he did a, he shot a VR sequence in a, a refugee camp, I think in, in Syria. And, uh, uh, and in that uh, film, I thought he did a really great job of learning uh, exploring some new uh, cinematography techniques. And what I mean by that is, uh, in this little VR tour of this uh, refugee camp, he had told everyone that, the, whose faces he walked through, don't ignore the camera. Mm. Assume it's a person, and assume it's a person you would like to have an engagement with. 
And so if I was looking towards you, you'd be like waving at me saying, hey, right. come check this out. But if I look over here, there's somebody riding by on a bicycle saying, hey, follow me. And you obviously can't look both ways for any length of time, right. but you felt engaged in both ways. And so I'm going like, oh, look, that's, a, that's interesting. But it was just interesting. Right. You know what I mean? I'm going like, okay, there's a new cinematic technique that wouldn't be normal in a normal film, but it's only one piece of a cinematic language. It's sure. just, it's a step. And so I still think that there's, you know, uh, whether it's movies or games, there's a lot to learn from a, uh, the language and activity to do. And, uh, uh, and even I was just talking with somebody in the hallway a little while ago, you know, if, you know how would I approach in an Ultima way a VR scene? And I'm going, you know, what I would want to do is I'd be locked in a room and there's a sewer grate and I'd want to get down on my hands and knees and take a screwdriver and pop the grate off and then crawl through that tunnel. Right. But I'm going, hardware, VR hardware won't let me do that, right? right? It's, it's not going to... You need uh, an infinitely large space with trackers. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. So, so even the, the first things that pop in my mind is what I would like to do if I was really there, it still won't do. And so, uh, and probably won't do anytime soon. Right. And so, uh, so yeah, I think it's, I think I'm still a little bit stumped as to what the first great VR experience will be. What's your take on, uh, of course, you know, Warren, Warren Spector, uh, he just told us at ECGC that he likes to make statements that get people to provoke them to argue with him. And he made the statement of VR is a fad. That was his, his poll quote that was posted everywhere. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you, it sounds like you're more towards I'm the closer, middle. Well, no, I'm actually probably closer to Warren. Uh, you, you know, I am not convinced that the billions of dollars that have been poured into this generation of VR will be paid back in this generation of, right. of hardware and software development. Um, you know, eventually, you know, the matrix will eventually be here, or maybe we're living in it now. I mean, right, I mean, it could be. You know, so eventually we will have sufficient technology to be indistinguishable from reality. And at that point, you know, the, we, we, you know, we will be there. It will happen. But I'm not convinced that we're as close as the billions of dollars of investment would imply. Sure, right. Yeah, well, that's, it muddies the waters a bit when there's so much investing going on, too, because then there's... Uh, well, there's tons of people wanting to make it true, right? right. And it's, if, if, if this generation of VR does not work, it's not for lack of effort <laughs> or money, because, uh, you know, there's a, er, lot of that. there's a lot of that going into it. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, I've mentioned my intrigue with it. You know, in, in one way, one of my intrigues is, if I'm wrong, you just don't want to be left too far behind. You know, you're, right. doing, you're going like, ah, it'd be, it'd be, it would suck to like be the naysayer in, while it all happens. And by the way, I've done that before. You know, like yeah. I remember, it, it's really funny. If you, if you look at my prognost like prognostications for the future, I'd say my hit-miss ratio is about 50-50 at best. You know, and, like, and, and uh, uh, my first one was my, great, my greatest lesson in business was, uh, you know, I wrote uh, my first games on the Apple II. And you might remember that the first IBM PC that came out wasn't a particularly great machine. It had a chiclet keyboard. Right. It didn't run really particularly faster than an Apple. It, the graphics weren't any necessarily any better. Uh, it had the IBM name on it, but I didn't care about that. And, uh, and so when I saw it come out, I was like, oh, well, anybody who knows this at all is clearly going to pick an Apple. And uh, this PC thing's not going to work. Right. And, uh, and so for software development, which you know, we, even back then it was taking a year or two to make a game. And so I kept our development teams working purely on Apple II and we'd probably port to the PC if it ever became relevant. Right. But then the PC took off so fast and the Apple, cr Apple II cratered so fast that we realized we would have no games to sell. There'd be no market into which to sell those games. And we had to completely change our staff over to PC developers. That was actually the last time I programmed. I never programmed on a PC. I never had time. Uh, the only thing I'd have time to do was quickly hire and remanage right. everything to get over there before we ran out of money. It very nearly put us out of, out of business. We, my brother and I both had to put in all the money we had in the world and we had to borrow another couple million dollars to keep the doors open to get, I think it was Ultima Five out on time, the only game I've ever shipped on time, uh, because it was, we were going to go out of business, <laughs> but didn't. Choice, no yeah. choice. Uh, and, uh, and things were fine after that. But that was my big lesson of you can't predict what the public's going to do. Right. You, know, you, you, have an, you can have an opinion, but, uh, you know, but it's groupthink. 
and trying to predict groupthink is uh, fraught with peril. Right. But if I had to make a stand, I'm with Warren. This, this, we're still a generation early, at least.